Hello everybody and welcome to Kerbal Space Program 1.6, the new version with a lot of new things in it. For instance, new animations for bored Kerbals. Well, there are seven of them in total and one of them is Jebediah scratching his behind. Well, let's focus on the other stuff. First of all, the first thing you'll notice is when you load up your vehicles, it is way quicker than before. Also, there are some weird warning messages. Well, they are originated from mods you had in previous installs in those vehicles that have some left some residue in the craft. But don't worry, if you are able to load them by confirming this OK button, you will be able to just add something to that or just uh, put the part back again, save it and then the error or that warning will no longer show up, so don't be worried about that too much. The big thing in KSP 1.6 is the Delta V calculator. And many of you will say, finally! We now got the information displayed on the right side in the staging uh, diagram, which stage is having which numbers of Delta V available. We also get information about thrust and the duration of the burn. Similar to Kerbal Engineer Redux, which many of you may know, that very famous mod, you can change what type of information and what level of information you're going to be looking at. And you can, of course, also change for which body this information should be displayed. Default is, of course, Kerbin, but you can select the Moon, Duna or anything that is available in the solar system. Of course, you can also change whether or not the calculations should be based on vacuum or sea level or at a specific altitude. So, that's all neat and everything, but how does it hold up to the originator of displaying a Delta V Kerbal Engineer Redux? I'm showing you here the readouts for the same vehicle in Kerbal Engineer from 1.5 and from 1.6, and as you can see, the numbers slightly differ. But this is basically due to some part rebalancing that Squad has done for this update. But now, the big question. Yes, how does it behave in regards to, well, what I criticized in a previous video about especially memory. Well, as you have seen here, I've used a vanilla install of Kerbal Space Program 1.5 because many of you have accused me of, well, your criticism is not correct because you're using mods, you stupid YouTuber, you. Well, let me show you something. This is a, one of the big vehicles that I have problems with in 1.5. And I'm using no mods, and as you have already seen, just adding this vehicle slowed the game down and increased RAM usage. Okay, I've just attached the second half, and look at how high the memory usage is shooting up. This time we're going to, well, end up at, I think, 9 point something gigabytes of RAM that the game is using for just attaching this half of, well, some sort of shell I tried to make. And now the real kicker is trying to attach this lander can. I've already clicked my mouse and as you can see everything is waiting and waiting and nothing's going on. So this was my main gripe with the previous update of Kerbal Space Program 1.5. So what did they do for 1.6? Here we go. And we attach the first half, that went smooth. We attach the second half, okay smooth again. And then we're going to try to attach a lander can again. Okay, virtually no lag. Huh. Well, what do you know? And the RAM is also being held in check. Amazing. There was also a big criticism for Kerbal Space Program to well behave badly when you reload a vehicle or switch to it uh, when it is landed. I had the exact problem with this vehicle, if you remember my career playthrough uh, video series. So let's try to load it up again. And no bouncing. Hmm. I mean, this could be coincidence, I don't know. Okay, uh, there are also some new part variants. Uh, what you can see here is the Poodle engine, the Terrier engine and the Spark. They look significantly different than from before. And you have some new variants for the Terrier and the Spark to, well, adjust them to what you want your vehicle to 
look like. This is basically some optical refinement, but it adds to the overall fit and finish of the game. The 3.75 to 2.5 meter adapter now has fuel in it and some new color schemes. And some new color schemes have been added to this adapter. And I was wondering why didn't that get any fuel. So yeah, I don't know, but that was the decision that they made. You can see me here just trying out some new other uh, variants. But let's get to something interesting, which is the Lander Can Mark II. Well, I was not a fan of that when I first saw the renderings on Twitter. But, well, actually when trying it out, it feels and looks a lot better. It has some additional attachment points, which can be neat. And yeah, <laughs> you can use it to build some cool rover creations like this. Also, and this is awesome, some command parts now allow you to change the control orientation. That is a neat feature, I have to say. And this way, your rover will always drive in the direction you want it to drive without having to add additional control points like docking ports or probe cores. And also, of course, we have a new interior we can look at. And this enables us to create some nice little rover creations like this flatbed I cobbled up in a few minutes. But that doesn't prevent you from driving badly. Okay, everything is fine. Mm, well, I'm not sure to be honest. There are still some weird things going on in KSP. Could be that this is because I have a preview version of this version of the game. And also I did not have a lot of time to experiment with it. And yes, we can now remove helmets from our Kerbals while wheels are going through their heads. Anyhow, well, this can lead to some interesting design choices. For instance, if you drive a drop top jet like this, you can take your helmet off to enjoy a breath of fresh air until you go too fast and your Kerbal dies. Like now. Yeah, the red indicator on top shows me that my pilot has died because it was going too fast and it was too hot. But if you're careful, you can enjoy the breezes on lathe while flying your plane. Speaking of flying, this is something neat. You can now select any runway or landing site to navigate to. The problem I have with that is why didn't they include that target reticule um, thing? So you can just click on it in your SES and it directs the vehicle to it. Hmm. You still have to do that manually. This is something that the Waypoint Manager mod does. And yeah, it would be neat if this would be stock, to be honest. So, Kerbal Space Program 1.6. An update mainly focused on quality of life improvements, some of which uh, we as a community have been asking for for years. Delta V calculator, hello. I am pretty sure this is not going to replace Kerbal Engineer for the long run because this is also some additional information that I really like to use when building vehicles. But overall KSP 1.6 appears to be a solid update, especially since they apparently have fixed that memory leak issue. Not sure about the landing lag bugs, um, I did not have a lot of time with the game unfortunately yet to see whether or not it's really gone. I am trusting that you guys will tell me once you have downloaded and experimented with it. So KSP 1.6, have you tried it out yet? Will you download it? If so, tell me in the comments. I would really like to know your opinion about it. And as always, thanks for watching. Goodbye.